This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 633. Tuesdays, we've been celebrating professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters at the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I got the crew with me, as usual. First of all, from the other end of town up in Moreauville, that, that Zombie Town, USA, it's the Riz. I got blocked again. You got blocked again by who this time? Jim Cornette. Like, oh, oh, I, we're still on the Jim Cornette thing. That's that, oh, that's a new development. That's, I forgot. That's a new development. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, no, no, last week, last week was Xavier Woods, which yes. I am still very angry about. Yes. But Jim Cornette, he can go somewhere. You just Does start a device and some fire. Start yes. That, well, you're gonna have to listen to Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold to know what that was about. But anyways, um, finger guns. So so Riz, you he's should start mad, a. He's mad about finger guns. Finger guns, Riz. Riz, you should have. Um, I had a really bad comment. I'm not gonna say. Uh, Riz, say you no, should no, start. No, 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 no. Say it. Say it. I, I was gonna say anytime something he mistakes for finger blasting and it gives him PTSD about the uh, page video. <laughs> Somebody yelled it's Xavier Woods at the Blackcraft show at Page, and I'm like, you asshole. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's I, a lot of that's a lot of things. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. All right. Also with us, yep. you heard the voice. He's the only one of us on the Mayhem show with a feature endeavored letter from the WWE. He is mad, Mike. Well, I don't even know where to go from there. I'm usually the one that starts off the show inappropriately. Like, yes. Good job. Good job, sword. Mm-hmm. Um Hey, you know what? Uh, we do do we do do put a parental doo-doo. advisory. And now you're saying doo doo. Yes, doo-doo. Lord Sorg. Listen, it's been a day. I'm about hey, chat, I'm about chat room, half. Chat room. I'm about half energized here. I need some more damn coffee, and and I got some water, and 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 we're podcasting. This is like Go the good old days. Please, please. What's that? Thank you. Nothing, Sorg. Okay. All right. Shooing people out of the Riz Central. But anyways, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We talk about professional wrestling most of the time. And you can check us out. We're here live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time at uh, the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page. Uh, please uh, like and follow us there so you know when we do go live and you can join us in the chat room. Like our good friends that join us every week, like Tina and Bradley and Dave and Casey's in there this week. And Alex and Alex. There's two Alexes from California, so I have to say them both. Um, and everybody else that pops in here uh, and throughout Bradley. the night. And Heel Bradley. I think I did say Bradley, didn't I? Heel yeah, Bradley, who I had, oh, had a wonderful sorry. post-show dinner with at Eaton Park, him and uh, a few other people uh, from Black Diamond. So it was good hanging out with you guys this weekend. And we'll talk a little bit about what happened in West Virginia. Something happened in West Virginia, you guys. And we'll talk about that later in the show, setting records and not uh, in in things that will press charges. Uh, but anyways, uh, you can just out, like I said, every week uh, on the Facebook Live. You can hit us up on the uh, email address. Good times! Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show. Uh, like I said, like that Facebook page or the Facebook group where a lot of great discussion and things that we usually bring up on the show are going to be a part of that. Go to WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can find links to subscribe uh, to us in the podcast and video forums and or look us up on your favorite platform and please like and subscribe and, and make sure you rate us uh, so that it helps us get the mayhem in front of more people. Also, uh, I said those parts that for Twitter. Patreon. That's a missing note there. And you can check us out. You can support the show on patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. We've been putting a lot more stuff up there lately. Uh, a few more things from um, in between show here. Um, some extra content. Sometimes a, an extra match sometimes that we, we get to uh, fan cam from a show. Like the Gathering of the Juggalos with our friend the, Vi- uh, the, the Violent. No, the, the Savage Gentleman. Yes, he does get violent. Uh, that that's just showed up on the Blackcraft Wrestling and beat up uh, musicians. Um, 
But also, we had an extra interview, like an extra like 10 or 15 minutes with the Rev Ron Hunt um, about because uh, he had a big match in RWA this past weekend. He's been had some uh, screen time on uh, Hulu's Castle Rock series. But also, he's um, in the news business, and he had a really interesting um, um, kind of meeting of his day job as a newscaster <laughs> and his work as a professional wrestler um and we talk talk about that and that's uh, exclusive to our patreons in the pocky club five dollar level over there but thank you to all of our patreon supporters the fan of the show dollar level ones as such as Bo Diggity! Woo! Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Jar- Carlin's Foundation for Podca- Podcast Betterment. And at the Pocket Club $5 level, that does get those a little bit of extra uh, flavor out there. Our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling, Christopher Bishop, Bradley, uh, Doc Remedy, and Dave Podner of the Tiny Shutter Podcast that joins us sometimes here on the show or on the Raw Wrap Up. And also at the Pizza Club $10 level, Billy Johnson out there as well. Thank you so much, everybody for joining us and, and for helping us literally keep, keep the lights on here in the studio, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. So it was an interesting weekend for professional wrestling. It seemed like everything was happening in professional wrestling, uh, sometimes here in the area and also uh, uh, nationally as well. You had King of Trios was this past weekend. Riz, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure you paid mm-hmm. attention to that pretty closely. You mm-hmm. had uh, a big... Big cage match here with the Renegade Wrestling Alliance that we talked about the, talked with the Rev about uh, uh, before that last week <coughs> for the Indie Mayhem show. And that's now available on IndieWrestling.us, of course, with RWA Aggression 2018. Uh, we also had a Guinness World Record Battle Royal uh, in West Virginia that we're going to talk about later. And also, a lot Hashtag of people... Allen. Oh, what's that? Hashtag Allen. No, it's all in. I don't know. Really? If you see some of those hashtags, I s- it looks like Alan. <laughs> I saw Alien. You saw Alien? Hashtag Alien? Hashtag Alien. Mm. Hashtag Alien. No, no, that's just all the, the penile probes that you saw. There was a lot. That explains that. Explains that. That, explains that explains the... Too, yeah. uh, the, 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 the... It was so amazing. The it? sentient boots. Just, so, just the, the see-through penile. So if you're curious about all in and you're busy Saturday because it was a holiday weekend, of course, where all this wrestling was happening, right? And and it was a what was it like a forty dollar pay per view to watch it live? I think, yes. mm-hmm. yeah. Um, plus yeah. they they had the zero hour on WGN. I haven't had a chance to check that out. But as of I think today, if you go to New Japan World and you're subscribed there, uh, you can watch the entirety of All In. Uh, minus Excellent. the. Minus the zero hour. So I got to watch it uh, actually as of uh, last night because I watched the first hour before I went to bed unsuccessfully last <laughs> night. Um, that's a whole other story. But and also why I'm not good today. Uh, but anyways, um, so so I got to watch a little bit of that. I, it was a lot of fun, guys. It was um, it, it was cool to see. We've seen some decent productions, but this felt like a... the. This felt like the biggest production (laughs) Uh, as far as wrestling goes. Of course, the biggest arena, 10,000 plus, uh, bigger than any Ring of Honor show, uh, bigger than than almost everything that's not New Japan in America, right? Um, This is this this was a pretty big. I think it's bigger than you know. I think Eric Bischoff is saying it's bigger than anything Impact Wrestling had ever done. I was gonna say it's bigger than probably um 52 weeks of impact crowds at the impact yeah, all together right <laughs> no no I'm, I'm being i'm being serious i'm no it is but it's it's yeah. tv taping so that's something different right it's not something that's going to be a, a drawing attraction it's a, it's television um right it's a different well, even the pay-per-views were kind of not a drawing attraction no so. no i think they like maxed out <laughs> at like five thousand, right um but anyway so so i mean that says a lot for something that more or less wasn't televised i mean it was so Okay, it was it was it was pushed really hard on social media. It was. I was gonna say that's the only place it was really advertised. Let, yeah, let like, me and let me roll this back a moment here mm-hmm. because I want to I want to talk production wise on this. It it felt like a Japanese show mixed with Bull Club more, of course, <laughs> right? Um, it, but it, it felt like between the stage and the camera work and the way the crowd was and and a lot of the angles and a lot of presentation. Um, it was like, uh, uh, you know, the, the Cody and Nick Aldis coming out with, with, with training teams, 
mm-hmm. as well, which include Diamond Dallas Page and Tommy Dreamer. Come on. <laughs> that was amazing. Well, that, uh, that's old school NWA, NWA title stuff. Though. Is it that, that as well? Okay. Yeah. Which, I mean, that all, that all kind of goes together, right? It intermingles and that stuff that's been lost in our, our day and age of WWE and everything like that, right? Like there's a presentation there um, that they're bringing back, which let's go from the, well, I want to talk more about the NWA title and what this means for that. But generally, I I hold this as well as almost any WWE pay per view uh, on a production wise. Yeah, it was for on the, the, for the most it, part. Yeah, it was on their level of WWE production, and I, I you can see, like you said, you can see some of the J- New Japan stuff, and you can actually see a lot more. of the WWE style that Nick and Matt have watched over the years. Mm-hmm. Cause they actually film, they actually produced it. They really? Were, they were backstage. Like the, the, the hang, the hangman page uh, segment. He was really like working the cameras. Mm-hmm. He was trying to, he's he really like trying to figure out which shot would be best to use. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was how they envisioned running a professional wrestling event when they were a kid. That's awesome. So they really, and, it, and it did it feel worked. like they got to kind of fancy book their own show, right? Yeah. And, and I think uh, when they were wrestling, it was BJ Whitmer who was producing too. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing a picture of him like in the control room. Um, Bradley's asking if you, you, you think that we could see something like this on a regular basis, like New Japan does. I, no. Oh, let me. Okay, this is this is the broader discussion around the show. No, I no. think what you have. I, I'm hoping they're thinking about all in again. Uh, maybe next um, year. Sorg, they're they, already thinking it. They, I think they basically kind of spoiled what the title would be too. Hmm. Double or nothing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's that's, that's that his all, that's his bet. That's his bet with uh, Dave Meltzer, double or nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they. Um, all right. So I don't think this was actually on the show. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it was or not. Um, I found a YouTube link for uh, the talk for like Matt and Nick and Cody and all of them talking afterwards, like addressing the crowd. And they said, you know, usually when you make a bet, sometimes you double down on it. <laughs> so it could either be all in double down or all in I think all in double or nothing is a great title for mm. a sequel. So in my mind I like this as this is sort of the WrestleMania Super Bowl of independent wrestling. I like the idea of this is where all of these disparate things that like Joey Ryan's doing it in front of crowds of 500 or 100 or what or 50, you know, comes in and is on the grandest scale. Right. And what what uh, they're doing a ring of honor, how, you know, however, a couple of thousands of those are drawing here and there. Right. And then that comes up onto a grander scale here. Right. Although I think we're going to start seeing ring of honor becoming almost as big on their own it's a whole other discussion i think so so i like the idea that all of this comes together into this one special show um which i i i said at one point this is like what uh, nwo sold out was supposed to be to a point right uh <laughs> that was his own yeah, kind of actually yeah yeah because yeah. it was the, it was the bull club show like you you didn't th- like part of me didn't think about it until like i didn't think they were going to put a bull club logo on the entrance for some reason mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. obviously, it, it's absolutely obvious, right? I mean, you had, and you had so many tenants. You had the NWA title, something super prestigious, right? You had yep. the goofiness of something like like uh, Black Machismo uh, popping up to defend his Ring of Honor World title uh, against Flip Gordon. You had you had the the celebrity appeal of Stephen Amell, who fucking worked the match on his own. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, Christopher mm-hmm. Daniels, of course, helped a little bit, but but and Jerry Lynn is the referee helped. And Jerry Lynn, is, of yeah, course. So I mean, there's, there's, there's and also for that celebrity a- aspect of it, you did have John Mayer, and John Mayer. Hey, hey, John Mayer. How about that? Just shows up, just there. My mom listens to John Mayer. Come on. <laughs> But anyways, hi mom, if you're in the chat room, I know she pops up every once in a while. Uh, but anyways, um, so so we have like all these aspects coming together. 
He, they kind of out Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon in certain aspects with it, right? And and oh. there was certainly de- there's definitely things in there that were if you don't like the humor of the Bullet Club and being the Elite Series, <laughs> you're probably not gonna like what's happening here. That's not necessarily that's not necessarily uh. true. Wait, 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 wait. We had an, that's necessarily true we, because there there was there's only really one match that you wouldn't enjoy. Okay. If you don't, if you don't like the being the elite stuff. Okay. Because Kenny Omega and Pentagon was a fucking great match. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Marty Skrull and Okada was a fucking great match. Absolutely. Uh, the six man tag was fine. It was it was time constrained, obviously. But the uh, even the Black Machismo stuff, like Black Machismo, he was doing that in Impact years mm-hmm. ago. That's not even being the elite stuff. That's just something that they happened to do for this show. <laughs> Because they got Lanny Poffo. They but did. They got fucking they Lanny Poffo. They, they got Lanny Poffo, like, out there endorsing him as the macho man. You had Jay Lethal pre- getting confused and thinking that Brandy Rhodes was Liz. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Like, there, she there was stood in the center of the ring and said, I'm not Liz. <laughs> It was phenomenal. He kept, she, he was even doing the thing from WrestleMania 5 where he was taking her from his corner and putting uh, her in his corner. Lord, like, like, Lord. He did every Macho Man thing. He did. They, he they did. did a Savage Simbo thing. They did a Savage Hogan thing. Mm-hmm. They did a Savage Warrior thing. Mm-hmm. They did fucking everything Randy Savage except Bonesaw is ready. <laughs> the only thing they didn't do. And I, and if they did, I would have I would have paid for it again on fight somehow just to give them more of my money for it. <laughs> Oh man, it, it was so great. It was, it was, you know, they, they called it even a preview. It was saying this is going to be a love letter to professional wrestling, and it absolutely was. We got DDP getting involved in the NWA title mm-hmm. match. We got, we got Earl Hebner. We got, um, um, I forget his name, but the one referee from New Japan, the one that's not Red Shoes. It's awesome. Red Shoes. Oh no, not Red Shoes. No, no, the other one, Tiger or something, yeah, right? Um, I it escapes me. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not good with Spanish names. I'm not good with Japanese names. Uh, <laughs> as you know, on Lucha Underground. Uh, show but um <laughs> it was it had so much going with it they even had a resurrection of uh joey ryan res um, erection sort of. uh yes uh there, there are so many jokes i want to know who filmed that part of it <laughs> <laughs> well, the, 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 the 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 literal rising um i have an answer for you oh okay uh i believe it was matt jackson's wife <laughs> Because uh, there was a point, there was a tweet that came out, and he goes, "I've been holding on to this for quite a while." <laughs> and, like when somebody tweet, tweeted about it, about ha- the the resurrection shirt being the same as the death shirt that he was wearing. Mm-hmm. He goes, "I, so, I think it was Matt Jackson's wife." Goes, "I've been holding on to this footage for quite a while." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh gosh, you got lust in your eyes." Well, she was the one who filmed it and helped uh, out with it. I mean, <laughs> oh, helped well, out. Unless it was Matt. Phrasing, unless phrasing, it was Matt. Phrasing. Do not say it like that, Vince. Unless it was Matt, then it's. I don't know. Maybe they share fine. everything. They were in, in, in the <laughs> locker room. Who knows? Ha- um, hashtag all in. Oh, oh, oh Shane's saying. Uh, Shane's out there saying uh, all in was savage. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I By the way, I love I love the trolling. Like again, going back to the all, going back to the uh, being the elite all in tie-ins. Mm-hmm. I I don't know if it was if if it was like intended to be this way or not. But misspelling Flip Gordon's name in the like in the I uh, thought that was misspelled intro was amazing. This is this is a pay per view that was built up. Sold out in like like thirty minutes, <clears throat> ten thousand seats, built on a YouTube channel. Yeah, so let's think about that for a second. Yes, you're involving Cody Rose, the son of Dusty Rose. Yes, you're involving the Young Bucks. Yes, you're involving all of this stuff. But it, it, yes, there's some pedigree that goes into it. But the the Young Bucks, yeah, they've been in Ring of Honor, but they're not like former WWE guys like Cody, right? 
and 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 the people that you had on there, yeah, there was a lot of who's who of the independent wrestling scene. And honestly, Cody Rhodes wasn't that huge of a name in WWE. No, when you no, 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 no. Then he's built himself up on the on the scene. And and this was this was the WrestleMania for people that maybe aren't really crazy about WrestleMania. See, you, you know what you know what I like in this too because I was trying to think of a good comparison. WrestleMania is San Diego Comic Con. WrestleMania is San Diego Comic Con. It's where you go for everything. It is. It, it, they had Starcast. You could get you could yeah. get pictures with Cody's dog. But but all in is D twenty three. Ooh. Mm. All in is D23. Yeah. It's very specific. Not even a lot of people know about it. But if you are an immense fan of the stuff that they present, you are going to love it. Just yeah. so we can cross and make sure everybody is because D23 is the Disney conference. They announced a lot of yes. Marvel and yeah. Star Wars there now since they own all that stuff. But also, could we say this is also a Dragon Con of professional wrestling? I was going to say. I was gonna say it's more like BlizzCon. Oh, it's more of the BlizzCon. Then what's like okay, a condensed yeah. version? Like it's more of a of a niche group of people that's coming yeah. to the show. And you yeah, because to... Dragon because DragonCon is just a smaller convention. Okay, yeah. like yeah, but BlizzCon is for Blizzard. BlizzCon Blizzard. is for Blizzard Entertainment or QuakeCon yeah. or or Quake some, yeah. Okay, I got you. Uh, I got you. It's a certain brand, and we're talking about that Bullet Club brand. Yeah, but like, but, but, mean, but it's tomorrow... still but it's still all inclusive of independent professional wrestling, right? I mean, in, in one week, there's going to be an iPhone conference. All in them is more of an Emerald City Comic Con, in my my honest, in my opinion, <laughs> says Tina. I, you know, yeah, that might be Chikara. Ooh. Is it? No, no, no Chikara's no, furry con. Was- furry con? <laughs> it is. There's Chikara's costumes. There's fancy I costumes mean, I mean, and let's games. Be, let's be real. That's right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Chikara, and for some Chikara, we all Chikara is Pax East. Let's, Pax East. Let's, let's, <laughs> Pax East. Okay. Let's let's right. oh, I go. love you, Chikara. Oh <laughs> man, I really was considering going to King of Trios until like my wrestling schedule built up this weekend, <laughs> and, and then all in as well. So, yeah. Um, but I hear great things happen there as well. Um, so mm-hmm. uh, Mighty Molly and the Nexus Sword. And really? Yeah. Wow. Mighty, Mighty Molly had her own trios team and. Darren Young, Michael Tarver, and Justin uh, Gabriel. Justin Gabriel. Wow. Yeah, they, they were all there. Showing. Um, Mighty Molly, uh, by the way, has never wrestled since she retired until then. Wow, really? And is going back to retirement. Wait, 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 wait. wait. No, she was wait, she was in the rumble. She was in the rumble. She was in the rumble. She was in the but rumble. But she hasn't been in a match. She's been she in a rumble, but not a match. Like one on like uh, like a oh act. like a, like a one on one thing one on one three okay. on three. <laughs> Alex, wait, Alex Miller says the black craft wrestling is like Bakersfield Comic Con. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Why well, you gotta do it to Bakersfield? <laughs> oh, geez, and the col- um, the colony one—that's nice to see. The, I, col- the colony did win. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Molly Holly at Evolution. You probably will. I mean, there's. Oh yeah, I'd hope what? so. I'd hope so. They're, they're, they're mentioning they're mentioning fifty. Yeah, I mean, fifty. So you're gonna have at least everyone who was in the Rumble. Whoa. I would say you have to. Mm-hmm. I would say you have they, to have everyone who's in the Rumble. Their mixed match season two is coming out. Oh, oh yeah, we already had this gonna, discussion. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about that. Okay, yes, all right, we are. All right. yes, we are. I, I just wanted to make sure I was because it just that popped war. up on my screen, and I'm like, they're actually doing this, and then I realized our truth and Carmella had a thing going on. Yeah. No, well, I'm gonna run down the whole teams after the. We'll break get break. to that. We'll get to that. Go okay. run down all the teams because oh, sorry, I had, some I had of them make... are great. Some of them are like, "What the fuck are we doing?" All right, we'll I, get to that I in a moment. Sure and I do. My mind wasn't going crazy there. And I want to talk more about the uh, all in, of course, in the NWA title. But in the meantime, I want to give a shout out. Hey, uh, if you like wrestling, if you like the Colin Card to independent wrestling that is all in, perhaps you like what we're doing here over and. Uh, over on IndieWrestling.us, there's a new thing going on. The IndieWrestling.us network, including Rise, Premier Wrestling, Prime Wrestling, Duke and Doe's Hardcore Memories, and so much more. We're releasing uh, PWO TV episodes, including uh, Madison Rain, all the old Lexi Lane in PWO, against Sassy Steffi as a part of this. You can go check it out. Seven-day free trial over at IndieWrestling.us network. Hit that up. It's only $5.99 a month if you want to 
continue with that. We're going to have a lot of stuff coming out um, next week. We, we're getting scheduled together. Next week, we're going to be releasing The Legend of Virgil and his traveling merchandise table over at the Indie Wrestling.us network. Uh, so go check that out. that's on this show right now, Sorg? What's that? Isn't there somebody on, on that particular thing that's on this show right now? Uh, I'm, well, what, I don't know what you're talking about, Riz. What? Find Riz. Find Riz? Wait, is it the extras as well, or is it, um, is it just the... We just included the main part. This. Ah, never mind then. So no, no, no. You're in the extra. I am, I am not. I am not. I am a exclusive for DVD only. You are a DVD only. Yes, yes. Uh, or a digital download that's available over at IndieWrestling.us Vimeo page exactly. that you can go check out. But you can see you can see the feature of this as well. Hey, you know when they play like Rise and Fall of WCW, all those extra matches aren't on the network or anything like that, right? So uh, well, actually, probably are somewhere, but because it's the um, network, damn it. They're they're on there at some point. Yeah, they know, I know, but they're not collected in the same way. Uh, but no, go check it out. Indie Wrestling US Network. A lot of great stuff. We just filmed some new episodes of Duke and Doe's Hardcore Memories, where we talk. We talked for two episodes about Raven, just Raven <laughs> in the ECW and everything that's going that like his kind of transition and the character and everything with uh, Shirley Doe, who who practically lived ECW. And Duke Davis, who grew up watching and is now a, a great professional wrestler doing some great things. So uh, go check it out, IndieWrestling.us. And also the RWA Aggression 2018 is now available on rental or purchase, uh, including the big cage match with the Rev Ron Hunt and Chris Taylor. And sign up for the newsletter. I believe we still have a free digital download that's included if you sign up for that. And get updates on the, the weekly content that's going to come out on Indie Wrestling Network. Uh, as well as new releases as they come. And we have a lot of uh, exclusive stuff that's going to be coming to the network as well. So please go check that out. All right. So I wanted to talk about, before we get to some of this other stuff. Um, <laughs> oh, some fun stuff in the chat room. But uh, so so the NWA world title, we've been talking about, you know, for a little bit here, kind of touching base with, you know, can it, can it return to the glory that it was? Um, I've been really interested in popping in every once in a while. Dave Lagana producing the uh, uh, 10 Pounds of Gold, which is this video series that's kind of uh, talking about the history and the prestige and everybody's kind of path as they are fighting for the title or defending the title as things go. Some of the interesting travels that they've had, including over to China, um, one where Flip Gordon fought for the uh, NWA title uh, at a Ring of Honor show recently, I think in Nashville. That was a really, really good episode. Um, and I, I, I did, I did comment on the Twitter while I was watching this, um, earlier today that, uh, I'm watching all in so I can be prepared for the 10 pounds of gold, uh, episode that comes out from Dave Lagana afterwards. Uh, so this, this seems like kind of the next step of it. They've been doing a lot with it, you know, getting that title around there, building that prestige up, and then it's built up to an event like this in front of 10,000 people, which when was the last time an NWA world title was defended in front of that number of people on that kind of stage? And who better to take it to the next level than somebody like a Cody Rose with his history, of course, with his father, being a title holder for so many times and and the platform he's built with American Nightmare Bullet Club being the elite and now all in. Thoughts? Uh yeah, I I think it'll be interesting to see if they have Cody like bring the title onto other programs that he's on. Mm-hmm like onto a ring of honor or occasionally on a new Japan show. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if they'll necessarily or on arrow or on arrow hell or on arrow. (laughs) You know, they they have crossovers. One crossover could be where everyone on earth is a professional wrestler. There you go. That's earth 23. Uh, Sure. Sure. Um, but yeah, like, I think it'll be interesting if Cody gets more exposure because Nick Aldis, like, God bless him, wasn't really signed by a major promotion. No, he was doing no. a lot of, like, local indies and, you know, occasionally defending the title here and there, but you never really heard too much about him after he left Impact. He was doing a good job, but he wasn't somebody that had, like, that, that buzz. Oh, yeah. But I kept he, forgetting Nick Aldis was Magnus. Yep. Yeah. I'll do it. So... 
But, you know, the story, it was a good story about him and the transition from the, uh, the, 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 I think it was a school teacher that was the champion beforehand and talking about that. Like, it's been a good story so far. And obviously we're building into, you know, the belt needs to be on a platform, right? And Cody Rhodes is that platform. But where does it go from here? That's a good question. We, we like, 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 I, I get, I get Cody Rhodes winning it for the purpose of having a name attached to that belt, mm-hmm. like having the Rhodes family attached to that belt. I, I would not but be so. I would not be surprised if there is. I think we're poised for some sort of announcement from Billy Corgan and the NWA, right? Like. Think about how we had a WWE UK tournament and we announced WWE UK NXT, right? So it, it's sort of a, okay, we propped it up to this level and this is sort of the pilot for this next step, whether that is a touring promotion or as a TV show or whatever. It doesn't, it's not going to be traditional. I guarantee you it will not be a traditional project. Maybe it will be an internet only show. Maybe who who knows, right? Um, but I feel like it's been slow, and I think they need to be slow with it. They're not hot shotting this at all. They're keeping it pretty decent. It is also okay. This is a good point uh, that Matt Carlin's is pointing out in the chat room. NWA, and this was mentioned during that match. NWA has a 70th anniversary show coming up. This is the 70th mm-hmm. year of that promotion with Cody with the belt. So you have a lot of crossover. You have a good. Yo, face of that, whoever he fights next for is going to have to be high profile. Um, and, and Tina's calling out and saying it sounds like it's going to be in Nashville as well. So that's going to be something to look out for. Maybe that's something that will be on a fight network or something. And maybe that's something that will also be maybe a more traditional calling card to independent wrestling or wrestling in general than All In was. Purely I think speculation. Could, I think you could also like I mean, this is down the line. I wouldn't be surprised if Cody defends that belt at the uh, the MSG show that's going to be taking place during WrestleMania. Oh, weekend. I think you can almost oh, guarantee that's, that's happening. Yeah, that's I. I don't know. I don't know who you put him up against in that. Mm-hmm. But Okada? Mm, no, I don't think so. Hmm. I. Because you you also can't have it be anyone that's like wouldn't be around to defend it, right? It, so it would be and whatever that plan is, and, and, and who knows? So who knows what they have thinking there? But I think I think the trajectory is right for the belt. There's already relationships with Ring of Honor. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that you see that belt if it hasn't already over in New Japan. Um, mm-hmm. you know, especially with Cody with it. Uh, you know, they're they're obviously already they're they're doing uh, Ring of Honor shows together and and doing those tours and having those belts defended across those. So I, I think I think what then you have you know you, you you now have this world where you know has already been set up for us where you have your Ring of Honor, New Japan's Impact Wrestlings, and whatever you call the wins uh, and and NWAs and and now those all prop each other up as a true. Not territory system, but just independent wrestling system. I guess uh, that's something something different. Um, this this is a new this is a new this is a new frontier for this kind of stuff, right? Does Colt Cabana get it later down the line? Asked Cody or asked uh, Tina. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm reading double lines. <laughs> no, I, Cabana Cabana had a, a shot with Otis. I thought. Uh, no, it was uh, Adam Pierce. Um, they had yeah. they had a series of matches. No, 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 no. It was after, it was after Ellsworth. Oh, he had it too. Okay. Oh wait, did is it? Did he have him in China? Maybe. They know yeah, they were both yeah. there. Yeah, I think that's where it happened. It happened like across. I think you, <laughs> I think you're right. It was in China. Alex Miller is saying Cody go, Cody versus Flip at MSG. <laughs> yeah. See, I think I think Tina has the right idea. Mm-hmm. She says maybe a free agent Jericho. That would be good. Oh, that would be a Cody oh. versus Jericho at MSG. Oh, yeah, that that's a money maker. That is definitely that, a money maker. That's a draw. And, and, you can, 
and you'll see the smoke coming from Vince McMahon's head. Oh, it's over. And then someone will say, oh, it's only smoke and mirrors. Oh. <laughs> 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 Thanks for screeching it to a halt, Mike. Does this what? break? You know, how many times have we heard from Chris Jericho that I won't do anything on a, on on in American soil because that's Vince's world? Yeah. In respect to but, him, oh, did we just break Sorg, that? Sorg, he has a cruise to sell out. Yeah, he has have a cruise. <laughs> hey, he's got a cruise. It's, inter- it's international waters. It is. It is. And he's someone, as, someone's got a cruise to sell. <laughs> I don't know. It's too close to. I, I think. Man, and I think I think when you have something like that, um, generally, we'll see what this MSG thing does uh, to people. But generally, um, obviously, Jericho has been allowed to do a lot, and and that has not been offensive to WWE. Um, WWE's tune has changed on a lot of these things. So, and also maybe Vince just doesn't notice. <laughs> so, no, Vince doesn't care. Yeah, yeah. At this point, it's like it's not like they're not making money. Nothing is really a. Th- so here's the thing: all this stuff can grow and flourish, and all ins can happen, and and everything. Uh, and NWA can and, and re- can re rise the popularity under Cody Rhodes. Uh, but Vince isn't going to make less money. Nope. If anything, it's going to draw people back into wrestling, and he's going to make more money. Absolutely, absolutely. You're playing. Hey, a, a Rhodes is NWA title, and my 70 year old grandfather is is watching again. And then he <laughs> discovers Total Bellas, and it all comes together. I don't know if that's necessarily a one to one correlation, but sure. It's also my grandfather does not like professional wrestling, <laughs> so just putting that <laughs> out there too. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> all right, what to roll around? So you wanted to call out Mix Match Challenge got announced here tonight uh, during SmackDown. I know I've seen it all over social media while we're preparing for the show here. Um, so the teams are all announced as well, I believe. Oh yeah, ten teams. Ten okay. teams. What we got? All right. Uh, well, first I'm going to announce the returning teams. Um, we have Lana and Rusev coming back. Mm-hmm. Which will actually be better because Lana's gotten a lot more ring time now. Uh, Naomi and Jimmy Uso coming back, husband and wife. Asuka and The Miz, who won last year. They're obviously coming back. Uh, We have Team Little Big. Team Little Big is once again canon, and I'm very much cool with that. And they're both heels now, too, so it'll be even more fun. Now let's get to the other teams. Um... Sorg, should I go in in order of most disappointing to least disappointing, or the other way? Uh, let's go least disappointing to most least. disappointing because I want to I want to hear okay. you drop in tone and excitement as you go. Okay, that's fair. All right, least disappointing, Carmella and our truth. Uh, they're, yes. they're on they're on the main right now. Yeah, sign me up, Carmella and our truth. They're not gonna win, but damn it, they're gonna be fun. Uh, uh they. They had a little skit backstage where Archer was looking for Carmella, found Maurice, and called her the other Carmella. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right. Uh, next least disappointing, Bailey and Finn Balor. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. They're both they so were happy. I, I, want, I want this to turn into we get a, us getting a demon Bailey. Mm. Remember, I remember those those like videos they showed of Bailey doing Finn's entrance and Finn doing Bailey's entrance. Yep. Uh huh. Yeah. It That's can happen. You want to ha- see it happen? It can happen. It'll probably happen again. Um. Okay. Oh, next least disappointing. I guess Charlotte and AJ Styles. Eh, that's not bad. <laughs> wow, we got high pitched on that. <laughs> that's not really that bad. Okay, I like, right. it. I like it. I like it because it, if if it gets down to it, it's AJ and Charlotte versus Miz and Oscar. Yeah, i i don't like I don't like the WWE champion good. necessarily. I don't like the WWE champion necessarily being involved in all this. Maybe that's well, me. You might have bronze just soon. Yeah. Right. Um. Okay. Now I don't know which is the least disappointing out of both of these. So I'm just going to say them both, and you tell me which one do you think is most disappointing. Alicia Fox and Jinder Mahal. Hmm. Hmm. And Bobby Lashley and Sasha Banks. Ooh. Bobby Lashley and anybody is very disappointing. Aww. Yes. But my and, man! Um, my man! My man! Um, but 
I can actually get behind a scene between Jinder and Alicia. Because the two different ends of the spectrum here, you have the crazy Alicia and the Shanti. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, oh, I guess. That'd be, good. Oh, that'd be fun. There's, there's, a, there's a lot I, of potential was, here. I'm sorry. There was one I missed and I completely forgot about it until you mentioned it again. Um, Natalia is also in this. Um, before I mention it, any guesses on who her partner is? Did I mention her or did, did, did somebody? No. No, no, no. Natty, Natty is the last team on the raw side. Who is her partner? Sorg, I want to guess. Mm, man, I can't think of I can't think of anybody that would make any sense. Spoiler alert, the shield is not in this. <laughs> Bobby Roode. Which is fucking stupid. Bobby Roode? Did we say Bobby Roode? Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode is a good guess. Okay. Riz, is that your guess? Is that your guess, Riz? Mm, no. Okay, Sorg, do you want that to be your guess? Yeah, I'll go with it. Okay, Riz, guess. Uh, fuck it. Um, he said there's nobody from the Shield. No one from the Shield. And it's probably not Z- Ziggler or McIntyre. Say some more, Joe. I bet some more, Joe. No, it has to be someone from Raw, Sorg. Oh, okay. <laughs> it has to be someone from Raw. Is it Ziggler? It is neither Mac nor Cheese. Okay. And Ooh. it is not Bobby Roode. Say Elias. It is... No, I wish it was Elias. Oh, my God. If it was Elias and Natty, don't you think that'd be in my least disappointing? Because we can call them Cat Scratch Fever. <laughs> there you go. Um, oh, Jason's saying Kurt Hawkins. Oh. <laughs> that would be amazing. If Jason, only. Jason, from your lips to Vince's ears, it's actually Kevin Owens. Oh. oh. Actually, that's good. Oh. I like that one. Oh. I, it's, it's, I like it's, that one. It's okay. It's why Canadians. I, what? Every time I get excited, my voice goes up. And it's okay. <laughs> I, I think it could be. I think they could be like the um, the team Ginger Snaps from why last. Is, is Riz doing yeah. a Jay Leno impression over there? Hey, you. Hey, 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 what are you guys doing? Hey, uh, okay. hey, have you ever seen my classic cars? Hey. <laughs> um, oh, wow. I'm looking forward to it. No, it was fun the first time around, and uh, no, I look forward to it. I really Bobby Lashley should not be anywhere near this. No, Bobby, and, and if he and uh, like Bobby could use I don't something. even I don't even think Sasha Banks could pull a personality out of him. Oh, nobody can. Oof. No, but see, here's the thing. You know who you'd have to pair, you'd have to pair Bobby Lashley up with someone who just like has a cares? who cares right now. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know who I'd put Bobby Lashley with if you have to have Bobby Lashley? A garbage can? Liv Morgan. I think it'd be fun. She'd be able to ride Bobby Lashley down to the ring. <laughs> I could in the ring. Good. It'd be great. Oh, boy. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Looking yeah. To that. Uh, yeah, should... Jason's saying you should have team Lashley and Bailey. That could also work because they're both smiling goofballs. Mm. And plus, then we can put head. Oh, fuck. We can put headbands on the Bailey buddies. <laughs> oh, my man. man. My, man. my man. My man. Hey, guys. He can, he can high five all of them and he can say my man after every <laughs> high five. You know, you know what energizes us around here when we have guests in, whether beast Water, ma- my man, beast man Water. or man. Uh, that's our friends at uh, that's our friends at Slice on Broadway supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza right up the street here from us at Sorgatron Media here in Beachview as well as over at PNC Park I'm with the Pittsburgh Pirates Carnegie PA and the East End of Pittsburgh check them out do not kick the door down but let them know the mayhem sent you sliceonbroadway.com or pgh underscore slice on the Twitter. And I don't think they will deliver to you at sea, Alex Miller, as you're going on the Jericho cruise. But uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more wrestling and wardrobe and so much more in the largest battle royal ever that happened in West Virginia this past weekend. And so much more of that right after this. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Wrestling Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Mad Mike up in Poughkeepsie, New York. And Casa Day, Mad Mike. As well as The Riz. 
joining us. That is. Uh, <clears throat> wow. Wow. That is, that is you haven't had a cough for like a month, dude. I'm really worried about you. I have. I, I've had this for like years like it, it, this, it this time it was it's not a cough. Riz cough my voice actually went out when i was talking just now yeah you got a little like like he's repubertying or something what? sure that's a thing that's a thing anyways that, moving on to the big thing. question mainstream matt had this one is it he said it was a suggestion in slack for either a big question or top 10 list what is the best non-black wrestling teacher in history and hmm. I'm mostly going to leave this part to because there was a large discussion in our Slack <laughs> about it. Navy blue and black. Is that what you're talking about? What, no, 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 no. What, no, no. What is the best non-black wrestling shirt? Right. Not what yes, color. Not what color look, is best. If you look at all in, there are a lot of black t-shirts. A lot of black t-shirts. Yeah. Yes. A lot yes, of black yes. t-shirts. So we 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 had several. First of all. Um, I believe uh, uh, our friend uh, cameraman Rob shared the uh, Hulk rules, the classic Hulk rules. Mm-hmm. Hasn't aged well. <laughs> okay, in general, no. I like the Hulk. That one actually one. probably should be black. Oh. oh. The Macho Man. I still see this. Somebody walked by our window uh, Wednesday night while the Rev was in here in a Macho Man shirt. I, I have I have a T-shirt and a tank top in that the purple one. <laughs> wow, you have a collection. Yes. Jeez. As as one does. Hmm. Oh, I'm losing my signal here. Um, let's see. We also have, uh, of course, this has been re-co-opted by, by, by somebody today, but the old Hot Rod t-shirt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The only, like, is, is that the baseball style when you have your... your, your... Yeah, uh, to be fair, CM Punk also co-opted it, too. That's right. That, I, I guess he did a little bit, didn't he? At least, that, the, uh, at least that style. Like when, he, like, when he came back with the cult of personality thing, mm-hmm. he, had, he had the baseball ringer tee, too. That's true. The uh, Razor Ramon with his face all over it, oozing mm-hmm. machismo. Ooh, yeah. A really big Razor Ramon shirt. Yes, yes. I mean, none of these are ones that, I mean, unless it's a classic like Macho Man one that you're not going to wear in I've public. Seen that fa- I've seen that fashioned into a dress before. <laughs> really? That was yeah. uh, Bobby FJ Town that shared that one. Um, mm-hmm. Let me get the next one queued up here. Hey, guys, remember Kai and Ty? Yeah. Indeed. Do you remember Indeed. Kai and Ty's t shirts? Because I don't. Yeah, it was it was blue. You, never, you don't know the T-shirt. Story? I don't. Well, I guess they did wear it, didn't they? But I, I just I, in in 1998 when I went to the King of the Ring, mm-hmm. I just wanted to say that uh, I was so close in buying one. <laughs> like you don't understand. You missed your chance. I don't think I missed anything on that one. <laughs> well, you there was be, you might be able to get it with the WWE custom. There was a wonderful there. Indeed shirt. Mm-hmm. That uh, they had evil. for Kai and Tai. Did it say evil on the other side? Evil. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, cameraman Indeed. Rob shared that. Uh, Chad the Shad uh, shared the uh, Carlito Apple t shirt. I almost bought that one too. That was a classic. I, I don't know if we can qualify Wait, that. I a did buy that one, I thought. <laughs> An honorable mention. Never word again. I recently discovered this, and I think I shared this over on the Wrestling Mayhem Show group. This is my pick. Um, there was a, a great a great one that popped up over on the Savage Stash. Uh, How to be a snob with Hunter Hearst Helmsley. And it's got <laughs> just, it's like a picture of him and his old, you know, what was that? The the, the matriarch. What, what the hell would you call how he dressed? Like he's a polo player or something, I guess. The aristocrat. Aristocrat. Thank you. And it's got like just a list of like, keep your nose turned up and, all, and away from filthy commoners. And just... Way too much text for a T-shirt, obviously, mm-hmm. right? Well, yeah, I don't think that that was never an official shirt. Really? That was not an official. I shirt. feel like that was. No. Oh, well, let me, let me follow not. this back. The only the only shirt that has had like a whole bunch of text on it like that is the Jericho Holic official top ten uh, list for being a Jericho Holic. I don't know. There's like the back of it, and it says like uh, Titan Sports, all rights deserved, and everything. Yeah, it's easy to fake. Yeah. But um, one one good one now that I'm thinking of it with Jericho, his um his return shirt. Oh, the the Save Us Jericho shirt was blue. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. that was a good one. I remember I bought that one as soon as it came out. Um. Let's see. Um, uh, Hulkamania, the, the the Hulkamania shirts in general were not black shirts. 
Um, the uh, I wonder why. Tina, eh. Tina Keys. Unless, unless you're talking about it. the NWO. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Um, Tina Keys says, ironically, the uh, the I, the star cold shirt, um, the CM Punk best in the world, uh, gray mm-hmm. and white ones were pretty good. Yeah, yeah a lot of lot um, of the, a lot of the. Um, we are missing a that one hasn't aged well too well, is it? We no, are missing a modern classic. Hmm. The Bailey purple I'm a hugger shirt. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And pretty much, I don't think the New Day's ever put out a black t-shirt. No, I don't think they would have. Nope. Well, they may have like, no, like they may have had black versions of it, but they, they never worn them. They, no. The, the New Day is all about colors. Um, Nakamura has mm-hmm. only basically put out red shirts. Uh, mm-hmm. One name we haven't brought up yet is Daniel Bryan. Yes, shirts. Mm-hmm. They started off as uh, magenta. Or- yes, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Or maroon, like maroon. Yeah. It's maroon. It's a, it's a shade of purple. It's, it's, it's the color of his tights. Yes. <laughs> well, was the color of his tights? Well, no, they- his shirt. His shirts are always the color of the show he's on. This is true. If he's on Raw. There are red, and if then of course, down, blue. and of course, certain times of the year, everybody's shirt comes in pink. Well, yeah, that's obviously true. That's right. Yes. Uh, any one of John Cena's stuff. That's right. Oh Holy yeah, hell. John Cena is uh, is notorious for not doing. He is the Rainbow blue. Warrior. Uh, no, no, that is, <laughs> that, is Finn, if... that is Finn Balor. That is Finn Balor. Okay, that is Finn Balor. Um, I don't know if this yes. if this was a, a result of this, but I guess they announced custom t shirt color, custom color t shirts. Um, as part of WWE shop, that's uh, that's been around for a few weeks now. This okay. is the first time they've really shown ads for it because okay. I don't think people knew about it. Yeah, well, but I mean, the, it's, it's pretty out. cool. It's pretty cool. There's like a whole bunch of different logos and stuff that you can pick from. So, like, it's not just like a Finn Balor one. Like, you can get retro logos and stuff too. Nice, mm-hmm. nice. That's and they sick. also have a really cool. Um, like Elias has a couple different logos on there. Mm-hmm. You can actually get like a like a Pittsburgh yellow. What would Elias do shirt? Ooh. Ooh. So I mean, you know, I'm just throwing ideas out, just throwing it out there, <laughs> trying to help a brother out. Uh, I'm gonna post this in the Slack. You guys tell me if this is uh, acceptable. All right, this oh, is some good it's podcasting it's here. It's, uh, it's of Ox Baker. Ox Baker. Oh, jeez. It's an Ox Baker. It's a a white shirt with black lettering. It just says, you will hate me. (laughs) That's okay. All right. Sure. Sure, sure. All right. I'm with it. Jimmy DeMarco had one he made that says, I pinned Ray Rowe. That's true. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Yep. And that was happening. Uh, Oh, didn't Piper also have the I broke Wahoo's leg shirt? Probably wasn't that, wasn't that white? Yeah. That sounds right. And and the Piper um, classic Panther logo shirt. That was a uh... yeah. You did, you, well, it really there weren't a lot of, the black shirt phrase phase kind of came in with like ECW, right? It can't. It, well, that's because it was the cheapest kind of shirt to make. Ah. Well, actually, the Dudleys, the Dudleys, the tie dye, the tie dye shirt. One of one of the coolest things I remember back in the like back when I was younger. Um, and I really wanted one, uh, was those shirts of like a cartoon version of the wrestler with their, like with your head as their head. What? Like, the, the, the neck down starts from the shirt neck to the bottom. Oh, okay. Kind of like, oh. kind of like the, the sexy, sexy bikini laid torso, torso yes, shirts. But it's of like, yeah. Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, uh, I think Razor was well, had a had a shirt. Wow, like that. I don't remember this era. It's hard to do those because most of wrestlers are topless. But it's it, they they come out and, like they have their entrance gear on. Like oh okay, Shawn had the vest on. Hmm. Uh, actually, Bret had the all the mirrors. His tights. Mm-hmm. Bret had the tights on. Okay, like, all the way through. Or did he have his jacket on it then? I'm not he sure, probably. but okay. I rem- I just remember that clearly because it, it was one of the ones I actually wanted to wear. I couldn't. Hmm. Hmm. Okay then. Hmm. Jinx. Let me see if there's anything else. Any, any, anything else you guys uh, uh comes to mind? I can't really think of anything else. Um, I'm good. Um, I'm trying to think if there are any new ones that came out there like. Uh, 
No, most of the, most of the ones I've gotten recently are black. Oh, actually, the uh, the event tee for NXT Takeover Philly was gray. It was very mm. nice. Well, now that this has become the style mayhem show, uh, <laughs> I was gonna say I should just walk over to my like, footlocker full of wrestling shirts and see what I have that's not black. <laughs> actually, one of the best non like not really wrestler shirts that I have uh, that uh, that I have that's focused on wrestling. Uh, was one of the first ones I bought from Pro Wrestling Keys. Hmm. Might have been a barbershop window actually at that point. Um, it's a it's a pink shirt with rainbows and unicorns. <gasps> yes, and it just says hardcore wrestling. I remember that hmm. one. Oh, oh, there is another modern classic that we have to throw on there. Marty the Moss Aztec Pride shirt. Mm-hmm. Yes, which I still want. One. <laughs> Champa's new shirt, it. I believe, is in. It's kind of like a gray, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Oscar and Naomi versus. Yeah. Oh, this is something else. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> they're announcing matches for something else. But anyways, hey, I want to give a shout out to our friends. Pro wrestling is a wild and crazy off form, art form, and Occupy Pro Wrestling is here to look at what makes it fun. Featuring articles, blogs, and a podcast that brings you interviews with fellow fans. Occupy Pro Wrestling is putting the smart back in smart work. Please go check it out at OccupyProWrestling.com. They're big supporters of this show, have been for a while, and we're supporting them back and let you guys know about them. Great podcasts and interviews that they're, they've been doing, as well as the Chikara and 15 podcast is a little bit of a spinoff of this as well. Go check them both out at OccupyProWrestling.com. And thanks to Alice and the crew over there for supporting the show. Um, so I had an interesting weekend, guys. One, of course, there was the cage match with our friends uh, Chris Taylor and uh, uh, the Rev Ron Hunt. It, there's a preview of it over on the uh, Indie Wrestling uh, US Facebook and uh, YouTube page, and you can get that over Indie Wrestling US. But also on those uh, channels, you can see um, the five angles of Doom. <laughs> the five angles of the um uh, over at the black diamond wrestling and mega championship wrestling um also um kind of co-opted this the uh attempt for the guinness world record um for the largest battle royal ever if you guys are on video if you're not um it is three rings it is the count is 109 participants. I say participants because there were at least three to five women involved, I believe, and at least one small person. Okay, okay. I was going to huh. mention because I was watching it during that. I was watching it live, mm -hmm. and I noticed there was a there, there was somebody in the corner, and I'm like, I was trying to figure out if like he was trying to get up or not. No, no, no. He well, technically he, he was, never got was, up. That no, he was that size, mm -hmm. and I was afraid that I, my mind was going crazy. And if you're but, watching, uh, I believe Sean Phoenix is about to jump off the tower into one of the rings. There you go. Of course he is. <laughs> of course oh, he is. good sword. That's insane. It is. It is. Also, they bumped my GoPro eventually too, uh, climbing up there. I didn't. I'm like, <clears> oh, even more insane. That oh. sword. It looks like it's just a massive bar brawl. It does kind of, right? It really, it really looked like it, didn't it? <laughs> and there's our friend, the Ra Rev Ron Hunt, in the video, too. Um, hey, say it's, it's kind of like you want to play a little Where's Waldo with your favorite uh, local independent wrestler, um, which I, you know, like the uh, Find the Andrew Palace, uh, or Find the Rev Ron Hunt, who's hanging out of the ring right there, or Find the Gavel with David Lawless. I think I just spotted him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're. Uh, Sorry. Who, who had the distinction of being the first person eliminated? The first person eliminated? It happened in the far corner, and it looks like two people fell at the same time. I was trying to figure that out, but it happened like a second after the bell rang. <laughs> like two oh. people went over the top. I didn't uh -huh. recognize them. There were a lot of new people in this one um, for me. Uh, but, it, no, it was a lot of fun. Um, it <laughs> and, and, by the way, who had the distinction of winning this thing? Our friend mm -hmm. of Brohemoth. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, Sorg, he had expert training in a Super Smash Brothers tournament. That is right. That is right. But Which is fair. Let's, let's, let's be let's let's be real. Super Smash Brothers is just a battle royal. It but, is. But to, but to be fair, he only got third. But he still had the experience. He avenged first. that. He avenged that by he getting the the number one in the battle royal. Mm -hmm. uh, so no, it was a lot of fun. Friends of the show like Jake Garrett, uh, the Beast Man, MT Osha um you know a lot of guys were involved in this chris larusso's in there as well 
Uh, there was uh, there was a one fellow that was in it that was in the last attempt that had seventy five people in Sydney, Australia, as part hmm. of it, uh, and he was a part of this one. So I, I think I saw him uh, uh, sitting as he came out, two time record holder. So uh, that's gonna be this is fun. So you can go check that out, watch all the angles, or watch this guy's stomach for five minutes as he's ha- he's hanging out on the tower uh, with my GoPro awkwardly. Uh, <laughs> uh, but go check that out. It's at the Indie Wrestling US YouTube and Facebook page. We have the videos over there. You can watch it. I- I've watched this like like parts of this multiple times because I there's so much, and I only know what I filmed. And uh, like, there's a whole other side of the ring, and there's people that I came up to later. And I'm like, "Oh, you're here?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I was in the battle royal." And I'm like, "I had no idea," <laughs> because you can't find somebody on the other side of the ring, right? It kind it kind of looks like the architect scene from The Matrix Reloaded. <laughs> it kind of does. Just like, just imagine all of those are Neo. We can CG that <laughs> later. <laughs> no, one of them is Neo, and everyone else is Agent Smith. Oh, uh, obviously Neo is Beast Man. <laughs> Beast Man's having so much fun. Look at him there. <laughs> oh, that is so great. Uh, but no, Black Diamond doing a lot of great things, a lot of fun things, and it was really cool to be a part of something like that. It was just a spectacle, a damn spectacle, man. Um, but uh, it... uh, apparently, Heel Bradley said that Andrew Palace eliminated no less than three people by tickling them. Yes. Oh, there was a lot of tickling. Yes, that was that was a, a new um, tactic I was not aware of. Oh, okay. That's uh, fascinating. Mm-hmm. Well, pro wrestling. Uh, so there's that. And also, I understand the Beast Man, our friend the Beast Man, has, has um, um, he's, he's out there. And I think he visited another establishment. Yeah. <laughs> there's a video out so there. Bad. I feel so bad for that old lady in the, ba- in the, in the, <laughs> the cashier that's there. She goes to he goes to a a um a Kentucky Fried Chicken. This video was released on on Labor Day, and at last count at last count during this um show has about seventeen thousand views. He comes in, he's hungry, he points at some menu items with his bone, and uh and and goes and destroys this poor this poor fellow's meal. Uh, the great thing is um when you uh you you hear him grunting as he's going in. <laughs> Uh, so it's a lot of fun. Go check it out. It's uh, we shared it on the Wrestling Mayhem Show group. Uh, Beastman visits common places is is an ongoing thing that I'm I'm really enjoying on the internet right now. I don't know where this goes for him, other than just other establishments. Uh, but uh, but but good for the Beastman for getting some attention out there. So, um, jeez, uh, Mike, wasn't there something else you wanted to touch on? Uh yeah, uh, one match we forgot to talk about with All In. Um, there was a lot of awesome lady wrestling. There all was, in. yeah. Uh, for, uh, I think we we've almost had all of them on the show. Sort have we? Didn't you interview Chelsea at one point? I almost interviewed Chelsea. Oh, I, okay. okay. I think I have met everybody in that match. Okay. For okay. one thing, um, I think I think I've met Madison Rain before. Um, but I know I met. Tessa, I know. I, I know. I, I know. I've met Master Ring. Yeah. Okay. Then you 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 close the loop on that one then. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um. But no. Well, you know, Britt Baker uh, uh, debuting in the uh, the new the new uh, um, uh, dentist uh, uh, entrance, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and Baker, came DDS. out Doctor Baker, <laughs> DDS. <laughs> oh man! So she's finally taking her advice of being sexy Isaac Yankum. Yeah. Which. It, it works. It definitely works. A it lot, works. a lot of works. wrestling fans are going to start going to the dentist. Yes. <laughs> um, we also had uh, Chelsea come out as the hot mess, but it was amazing because she was like half normal Chelsea Green and half Laurel Van. Ness. How did you feel about the split personality thing she was doing? I was totally cool with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was like. Uh, uh, when Doink went in ECW that one time, or he had wait, but one, cooler, but cooler. Yeah, yeah, you, wait, you ne- you never saw? Yeah, Doink he was in like ECW? half my Matt Born, half Doink. <clears throat> oh, okay, I did. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but yeah, uh, it was it was like that. Oh, and and, and Alex is pointing out that uh, she came out to the uh, a, a girl version because I think that was a remake, wasn't it, of Adam Cole's music? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. So 
I, I, I love Beastman pops up right after we, we, we play his video on here. It's like he knows. But yeah, it, it was it was a really, really fun match. Like, yeah. And it's insane to see that some of those people are going to be in the Mae Young Classic that starts tomorrow. <laughs> yeah! It, that's insane to oh, me. Geez, because that's tomorrow. Damn it. Yep. Half. Yeah, we're going to be... They're going to be running the Mae Young Classic and Mixed Match Challenge at the same time, y'all. Wow. There's going to be a lot of wrestling to watch. Wow. And a lot to log. Hey, I, caught, oh. I was catching up on Impact today, Mike. Why? Why? Because Why this Sammy yourself? Callahan. Have you, have you watched NXT? Sammy Callahan. Yes, I'm caught up on NXT. Okay. All right. Okay. And I, I started on on like two weeks ago Impact because I wanted okay. to watch the Mexican death match between Pentagon and Sammy Callahan. Well, and I'm glad till, I did. Just wait till Lucha does it better. <laughs> oh, Lucha will not involve pinatas with staple guns in them. Um, how do you know? <laughs> That's true. Never mind. Never mind. We've had nunchuck matches in Lucha Underground. <laughs> This is true. This is true. We now, got someone slammed through a wedding cake. You know what Lucha hasn't done? They haven't had a small child hit by a car. Hold on. Hold on. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. You're thinking. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Time out. Time out. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, 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 no, 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 no. I thought watching. Izzy's taking a lot bigger bumps than I thought she would. Yeah, I thought watching uh, one Mickey James get pushed off into a uh, the Hogwarts train. Express. Yeah, I thought that was bad. I thought I thought seeing somebody's mother getting pal driven was bad. Why? Which you saw in person at West Newton. But what was that? So apparently, la- the week before, does this, have, does this have anything to do with Sammy Callahan? No, no, no. This has the LAX and what's the new LAX or the old, the old the, school, uh, the OG, the OGs is the old LAX and the, with uh, 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 Kingston and and uh, Conan mm-hmm. has the new one that that's that's um, the, Conan, 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 Conan O'Brien, Conan, Conan O'Brien. Conan he's dead. Conan yes. O'Brien? No, no, he's not dead. Oh wait, he is dead he, in the other. Okay, he anyways, is dead. it gets so confusing. Rey Mysterio, the ghost of Rey Mysterio popped up as Wolverine, and he's supposed to be locked in a cage under the temple that well, everybody left. See, that's that's how he got out of the cage. Wolverine he, style. He just ripped his arms off, and they grew <laughs> back. I we was. figured it out. We have cracked the code, Sorg. Okay, all right, all Anyways, right. The baby getting hit by the car, Sorg. What the hell? So, it's not a baby. <laughs> it's a small... I mean, the kid's like maybe 8, 10 years old or something, right? <laughs> so so there was a match. There was a match, like a, pack, a parking lot brawl that they had between between the two gang teams. And um, and then they were having a celebration um, in somebody's backyard in Toronto. And, uh, and 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 I, I think they were trying to do a drive by, and everybody's crossing the road, and little Ricky, Ricky! little Ricky was crossing the road with them, oh, and they all got out of the way. I think it was little Ricky actually. So, oh no! <laughs> you got some explaining to do on that one. Oh no no no! Why? That's even why? Because the guy that got they're, they're, I, I forget what movie it was. The guy that got shot in a drive by was named Ricky. Because mm. all I remember is Quick Cuba Gooding Jr. yelling, "Rick!" Mm. So there was like kind of a drive-by thing. You know, one of the guys from, like, presumably the OGs, trying to take him out, and he took out the little kid. So that's a thing in Impact Wrestling, you guys. But then again, and... before you shake your head, that reminds you that we watched the death and resurrection of Joey Direction. Ryan on All In, and you loved it. You loved uh, it. Yeah, because that sounds funny. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, sorry. There, there's a difference. You can be ridiculous. We were just talking about. We were just talking about how there's been a murder every episode of Lucha Underground this season. Yeah, and they're mostly funny. Uh, okay. Hashtag rest in pizza. Okay, okay. I'll give you. Okay, I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. Sorry, rid- and plus, you also have to earn the ridiculous nature of your product. Have you been watching lately? No. Eddie Edwards likes the Eddie Edwards that he is now with the kendo stick. And that he has an estranged wife that's wrestling Eddie, now. Eddie Edwards. I I still don't remember if he's... Oh, good. Alex Miller's letting us know that uh, Little Ricky did survive. <laughs> so so they didn't even have the balls 
to kill a kid, Sorg. <laughs> you know. Okay. Okay. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Wow. What do uh, Jeffrey's asking? What do we think of what, of Brian Cage and Impact Wrestling? Um, uh, again, I just watched his promo today and his match with was it Phoenix? I think. Yeah. It was, he had a he had a great match with Phoenix. But again, again, as you know, Mad Mike, we've kind of seen that see, before, right? See, Sword. The reason you like Impact so much is because they it's just co opted Lucha without the creativity. I'm all right with it. I'm cool with that. All right, I'm also all right. Okay, as long as Mike, you recognize that, like Mike, like, you're you're not liking Impact Wrestling. We're gonna you're get like, K- you're Phoenix. Liking, we're gonna you're get liking Lucha Overground. Phoenix Fien- oh. <laughs> Lucha Overground. <laughs> yeah, because it's not. I it's love in that. That should be it's our in, new, that should be our new midweek war podcast uh, Lucha, about Impact Lucha, Wrestling. Lucha Overground. Yeah, Lucha Overground, the Impact Wrestling podcast. Yeah. I'm okay with that. I'm still not going to watch it, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> uh, coming soon to WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Anyways, um, there was a point. Oh, we're going to get uh, Phoenix and Pentagon and Brian Cage against um, um, OVE. Yeah, see, I don't care about OVE. Oh. Yeah, no, no I, OVE. I don't care about there's them. There's such fun stuff happening with OVE right now. I I. I could care less. Maybe because I'm so close to Ohio, I like it more. Yeah, that probably has a lot to do with it. If it if they were called NYC, I'd probably love them. <laughs> it would be so NYC. Were, NYC. So neither, I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. NYC would be Tony Nice, um, um, Rex Lawless, and I need somebody and, else and from Rob, New York City. Robbie E. And, Robbie e. and Robbie, Robbie E. Yes, that sounds right. That sounds right. So 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 you're saying none of you two like scu no i like scu but i but i've SCU. like you but i've liked christopher daniels and frankie kazarian since before they were like anything all i like, know even, is before, before they even teamed i know all i know is this is the worst town i've ever been in ah. exactly if you don't that's their <laughs> thing um i watched a compilation yeah no of it's every sad. no one at all in knew that because no one no, no one way. no one did the chant no way. Yeah, yeah. No did. That was unfortunate. But anyways, I mean, but when there's all those little disparate things and you have something come together like that, you know, it's 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 not all gonna come come together. So anyways. Yeah, but they showed a promo them with them saying it before. Yeah, sh- Jason's sh- saying Don Castle as far as that NYC. He's not he's not technically from up in Rochester, but still I think you could classify him as New York City. If Dalton Castle's in NYC, consider me signed. In. Let's make this happen. We know you yes. guys are listening out there. Uh, no, I did not just disown Pittsburgh. That's just a thing they do in SCU. SCU. So, SCU. 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 My man. My man. Oh, God. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh. All right. All right. I need to. A... My man. My man. My man, the Thrifty Podcast. Hey, Thrifty's got a new episode this week. I listened to... Most of it. Um, and, and the good part was, uh, it's all good. But the, the awesome part was he found an ECW DVD. And we're actually scheduled the Thrifty Podcast to come on in a couple of weeks. Um, and I think we're going to get both of them on. Uh, they, he found an ECW DVD with handwritten on the back. It was um, some kind of like uh, uh, takeover thing. Go listen to this episode of the Thrifty Podcast. Um, it, but it's like ECW in Pittsburgh. And almost every match has Shane Douglas in it. Well, as it should. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I, I want to watch Was this. Was it given to him by, by Shane Douglas? Uh, yeah, I think, yes. Uh, a disguised Shane Douglas at the Goodwill handed it to him. It's like, try this, Sonny. Um, <laughs> went back in the tell, day. Tell your kids there's a franchise in it. Jeez. <laughs> damn it uh cut his damn music um but today's sentimental <laughs> attachment to things other people have forgotten and tossed aside might only be riveted by virgil's sentimental attachment to his former wwe career can you guess which one has a great podcast talking about the happiness of their sentimental attachment brings that virgil. would be the thrifty pot no it's not oh. virgil yet no uh check out the thrifty podcast on the sorgatron media podcast network or sorgatronmedia.com or check out thrifty podcast on the facebook or your favorite podcast catcher um but 
a lot of fun going on there uh, with those guys. And I say they're big wrestling fans, and uh, it's, it's good that we're going to have them back here in a couple weeks. So, guys, it is time to learn. What did you learn from wrestling this week, gentlemen? There, there's so much. <laughs> it was a very educational weekend, wasn't it? I learned that no matter what you liked, no matter where your where your line in the sand it draw, is drawn for liking professional wrestling or hating professional wrestling, there is one common denominator that stands in everybody's way. Jim Cornette's going to block, block you. Jim Cornette's going to be a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> For somebody who doesn't like fun things, mm-hmm. remember Jim Cornette wrestled uh, um, Jose Lothario. Yeah, that him at Bad Blood. Really? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And my guess it wasn't that good. Mm. No, no, <laughs> it was not. So, and and, and another. It, it 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 brings me to another point. Um, also, Jim Cornette was in the gimmick battle royal, so he can go. He can go. Yeah, he can go fuck himself. He can go fuck way. himself. Basically, he couldn't eliminate the Iron Sheik. Um, so it brings me to another point where we live in a time now where guys like Jim Cornette, Dave Meltzer, anybody else in this world, they don't have a voice anymore. They've been drowned out by they people don't. with podcasts like the Wrestling Mayhem Show, WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. Like we have a voice. The people on Twitter have a voice. Facebook groups have voices. Everybody has their own voice. So when I hear people go, this list sucks or this list sucks, guess what? Make your own list. Maybe not 500, but maybe have it like 10. Because guess what? The people who do the PWI 500, at, I guess I bet at level 200 after that, they're just naming people at that at that point. Feels like they it. don't give a shit. Feels like it. <sighs> hey, answer. I found this guy on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's like, hey, this guy has a Twitter account. Okay, all right. I I, I learned a bunch, Sorg. Mm-hmm. I'm angry. Um, um, I learned that I need to see all of Jordan Grace's matches. Yeah, I know, right? And, oh, dude, and, she was supposed and, to be here a couple weeks ago for IWC, and they had to cancel. It was so and, sad. And I, like, I may book her for Mayhem Mania this year. Oh. <laughs> I need to see. Is there a place to find the All N Zero Hour? Uh, maybe on WGN America, if they have a... Let's see that. I was looking for it on, like, the Xfinity app, and I didn't see it pop yeah, up. Yeah, um, so. but... There are so many matches I want to see with her. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know if they exist. If like if like her and Taya exist, she... please someone tell me. Oh, I'm pretty sure that exists. Mike, I'm Mike, sure she was supposed that. to take on Kitty Arquette here a few weeks ago. Excellent. Yes. Um, I, I want I want her to go to Evolution. I want to see her versus Nia Jax. Um, hell, for Mayhem Mania, I might book her versus Brock Lesnar. Um, uh, <laughs> everything Jordan Grace is awesome, like just phenomenal. And it was such a that was the one that was one of the big things I didn't like from All In was that she was eliminated by fucking Bully Ray. Jeez, probably one of the most sexist assholes in that match. Jeez, and she that 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 bugged me to no end. That really really bothered me. Um. Another thing I learned, um, Joey Ryan learned the ways of reincarnation from Lucha Underground. Um, it was solely with his penis. Oh, <laughs> yes. And and I also learned that um, sometimes you guys wrestling is just too sweet. <laughs> Occasionally. Occasionally. Yeah. 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 Oh, and by the way, uh we need a Jerig um um a oh fuck, I had a name for this and I forgot it completely. Damn it. It was a it was a 
There was a pun for Pentagon in Jericho's name. Now I can't remember <laughs> it now. Okay, never mind. That's okay. That's okay. What it, else it's, did you okay. Learn it's okay. It's okay. It's um, okay. I'm, I'm going to go to the chat room first. Also, okay. I found a Jordan Grace uh, match from RWA. I'm going to share. Also, Jonathan, Jonathan Gresham's on this show too. That's awesome. Hey. Oh. Yeah, this is back in. Um, I found a show um, Unleashed back in 2015. She was on. And I think we did post this one. It's like Gresham, Sanjay Dutt, and Brandon Scott, who's shown up on NXT Ooh. and 205 Live a lot uh, for the Cruiserweight Championship. Oh. Yeah, I think I posted that on like the RWA YouTube a while ago. So look out for that. I think I'm going to do a round and, and throw these up again. Mm. Uh, from the chat room, there's a lot of learned in there. Um, Alex Cards, I imagine he learned that if a Virgil starts a podcast, I might have to quit the business. Uh, <laughs> Alex Miller learned that a, a band can just get me to buy a front row ticket to a re- ticket to the wrestling show. He is really excited about somebody got announced for um, uh, Reapers. Uh, was it whatever the next Black Craft Wrestling show is? Uh, Reapers Revenge, I think it is. Um, also, every time, also anytime there's a wrestling show with Reaper in the title, I think Reaper Matt Connor is going to be there. But that's just real shoot wrestling, I guess. <laughs> um, Alex Carr has also learned to never spend ninety nine dollars on a weekend wrestling convention again unless I actually attend. Were you going all in and didn't make it? Alex, sorry, oh, bud. You should have te- you should have tweeted Cody Rhodes. He might have paid for your trip. That is true. That is true. Tina mo- learned multiple things. Pen- Penelope Ford is awesome. Yes, she oh, is. Yeah. Oh, dude. That, that was my first time seeing her. Holy shit. We have a, there was a great match that she had, uh, I think, with Britt Baker in IWC, I think, last year. I saw her at least two nights, including a match with Joey Janela. Um, and she was involved with the Invisible Man match with Joey uh, the next night at the Gathering of the Juggalos this year. Wait, and... wait, wait, wait. Um, yeah. Can we re- rewind? No. Invis- Invisible Man match? You yeah. don't. You don't know about Joey. You don't know the history of you don't Joey, Joey Janela and the Invisible, Invisible Man. Man. Didn't I talk Man? about this on the show? No. No. The Invisible Man won a match because Joey Janela used a power driver, which was banned in Florida. Right? No, in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. And so the Invisible Man won the gauntlet match. And ever since, Joey Janela has a grudge against the Invisible Man. That's right. I believe he lost at the Gathering of the Juggalos and, and um, even Penelope Ford. Well, uh, Penelope then Ford I look forward help. to seeing um, Joey Janela versus Brad Pitt. <laughs> oh, okay. Also, uh, Tina learned that Jordan Grace... Is it Jordan? 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 Jordan. Jordan. Okay. Jordan. It's spelled weird, so I, I want to add more to it. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Grace uh, made me want to uh, up my squats game. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, now she, I, she actually posted a really funny tweet. What's your max? One Brian Cage. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now I have to swear, uh, have a swear word limit during Omega Penta matches, according to Junior. <laughs> oh, That's no. Better. That's fair. If your kid uh, is calling you out on swearing during wrestling matches, just have a swear jar, sir. There you just go. Have a swear jar. It works for Luke oh, Cage. Yeah, ha- have a swear jar. Uh, swear, uh, in the Slack, I have another thing I want to show you. Uh, CM Punk had a signing. Oh, no. We forgot Alex's email. Ooh, oh, Alex's no. Email. I'm so sorry. Damn, Shit. these shows get away from me. Oh, this, this look here from CM Punk? Yeah. I. I CM Punk hates his life right now. I, he must. Oh. You look like every picture was just—he's not happy. I'm sure people were he's asking not him. Not happy st- at all. People must have been asking him the stupidest questions too, right? Like, wait, when are you going to come back? Are you, are you going to be all in? Are you going to be all in when you come back wrestling? Are you coming back to wrestling when you come back to wrestling? Is it all in? Is that why you're here? So he probably heard that fifty thousand times. Oh day. yeah. And and also he took a picture with the uh, Brock Lesnar guy. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. But yeah, the email. Uh, email. I don't know. Alex has a lot here. Uh, da, 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 da. Real quick, Alex loved the Battle Royal during Zero Hour. In fact, the pre-show, the whole thing was pretty good, but the Battle Royal had just about everything he could have wanted. That's how I heard it was like the most amazingly booked Battle Royal ever. Mm-hmm. Which is... um. I had some issues with it. Okay, okay, okay. I had some issues with it, but you know, Dan- it was fun. Bell Rose always fun. Daniels and Amel was a. Well, I agree with him. It was a good match. It was great to see Jerry Lynn around. Um, you- I want to dig up. Oh, my- uh, Steve- Stephen Amel just tweeted. It's been over forty-eight hours since my coast to coast, and I just got feeling in my left hip again. Oh, so. good. Oh, good. Good for him. So good. good for him. Worried. I was worried about him. Absolutely. Davidson. Love the NWA batch. You can appreciate the work that they've been putting to rebuild the legacy of the title and the brand itself. Lends to our discussion before. Side note, uh, you know the World's Heavyweight Championship is the only active title under the NWA brand right now. I heard they're going to... I, 
there was I thought there was rumblings about a, a North American title or something coming up. They should they should do a women's championship, like North, North American continent or something like that. But uh, I don't, you're I right, don't think you can do a North American title anymore. No, no, but but, but I thought it was like a. a, a I don't know. It's something like that. Maybe I'm just confusing stories or something. Chicago yeah. Street Fight wasn't a big fan of the post-match stuff, but uh, also another storyline where they were going, so it made sense in context. I was talking about Joey Ryan. Um, mm-hmm. uh, good seeing Lanny Poffo go. Uh, also, Omega uh, Pentagon. Words can't do it justice. And, oh, boy, that Par- Jericho post-match caught me by surprise. Oh. Um, Hashtag sell that cruise. We watched the GIF uh, on the way back from RWA. Thanks to Chad the Shad on Did uh, you on know um, Jericho performed his Fozzie concert with the Pentagon makeup still on that night? Oh, yeah, I heard about that. He, yeah. like, flew to, like, like, Kansas City or something? Yeah. With the, with yeah, the... He, he left directly after that still in his uh, still in his Pentagon makeup and performed Fozzie as Pentagon Jericho. Jeez. <laughs> All righty. Um, let's see. Alcada Mar- Marty was fun. Fun main event. Uh, take it home. We got to go now. Someone audibly yelled, take it home. We got to go now. Yeah, I saw that it, it, it ended at, at like three hours, ended, 59 minutes and 59 seconds. It was ended three seconds before the show went off the air. Oh, it was the barely legal of. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because the power didn't go out. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Right. So, all right. Um, what did I what did I learn from pro wrestling this week? I don't think there is any sensible way that you can shoot a match that participates or participants are in three separate rings. Now, I'm going to figure this out because not only do we have the battle royal, but they also did a 16 man tower of dune match. They also did a six or eight team tornado tag across three rings they also did thankfully pa versus ohio match happened in one ring uh so that'll make sense at least um we also had i don't know one or two other matches oh the the big man match happened in one ring where where it was like the most weight in one ring was like kind of the stipulation of it sword sword you know what you should do Hmm. if you ever run into this again like you know how WWE does the crazy like aerial cam, just sure. like drop a uh, a three sixty cam. Oh, I want to, dude, dude. If I knew there was stuff to hang from there, there's gonna be that tower and stuff. The three sixty would be so there, but then Sean uh-huh. Phoenix would have climbed it and fucked it up anyways. Uh, anyways, oh. um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Sean Phoenix. Uh, burn the house down. Move. My, actually, I think it was the other guy that moved my my GoPro from the tower. So, uh, anyways. Six teams. Thank you, Tim Cross. Oh, one, Six teams. Are, one last thing I learned. Drew Gulak fucking hates the Shield. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> he came from guys. another show. He doesn't even work Monday nights, and he came over to beat up the Shield on Monday. He doesn't even go here. Oh, <laughs> uh, guys, we have so much. We got, we have, I got to call out some people in the chat room here that are hopping up. One, hey, what's up, Brandon K? What is up? Gary Michael Capetta, legendary WCW announcer, is with us in the chat room right oh, now. Uh, we just did an interview with him uh, recently that will be up here in the coming weeks on the Indie Mayhem show. We have so much. We have uh, uh, more more discussion with Joe, Joe Dabrowski uh, from Ring of Honor uh, that we did last week. That's going to be coming up in the coming weeks. We got, we got an interview with Iceman Tony Johnson. We're going to have uh, Team Storm, the new IWC tag team and heavyweight title uh, champions, will be on the Facebook Live on IndieWrestling.us Wednesday night this week at 10 p- or 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so much is going on. What's that? That is tomorrow. Well, they yeah, people that are watching tomorrow. this anytime, Missy. It's not just the people with it tonight. There's people who watch this Thursday and they've already missed it, but they'll catch it on the podcast feed later for Indie Mayhem Show, wherever you might want to get that on your podcaster. This is how you do a plug. Anyways, uh <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. This has been a blast. Um sword breathe. <sighs> Anyways. But no, thank you, everybody. It's been a great show. Thank you, uh, Mad Mike, the Riz, for joining me. A nice Mayhem Light show this week. I, I like to think of this as Mayhem Classic. Mm, mayhem is, Classic. Is spelled, I like it. Is it spelled L I T E or L I G H T? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Producer Missy is raising her hand off mic. What's up? She learned that 109 bodies generate a lot of heat. I was hearing from some of the wrestlers afterwards. They're like, I had to leave that ring because that ring was a lot warmer than the ring before it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was amazing. Um, Did he yet to appear? The, not that I'm aware of, but then again, there were 109 people. and I, <laughs> I think there's people I know that I still don't know were there. So 
yeah, I'm still figuring that piece out. Um, coming up in the next week, somebody should have worn a water uh, water uniform. No, there's some with people with reflective vests at least. Um, I uh, I want to give a shout out next week. We're going to have actually Charlie Deach from um, from uh, Pittsburgh Current is going to be uh, a part of this show. He, we had a meeting. Um, they're a new newspaper here in Pittsburgh. Um, uh, made a lot of press uh, when he left another publication. But uh, we showed we're starting a podcast with them this week um, on the Sorgatron Media Network. Uh, so uh, tune into that. It's going to be on the Pittsburgh Current uh, Facebook page on Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, but he showed up for the meeting in a Legion of Doom Chicago Street Fight um, t-shirt. So I uh, immediately booked him for the show. Uh, so <laughs> he'll be joining us next week to talk about some professionalized wrestling. And uh, we're going to have some fun with that. Uh, and also the week after that, I we booked, like I mentioned before, the Thrifty Podcast should be joining us. And uh, and I wanted to give a shout out. I just um, This is something that I found on uh, the local. Somebody, somebody shared this article um, with WTAE. Uh, here in Pittsburgh, uh, there is a Kickstarter right now. Six days to go as of this recording. I believe my my bid put them over their four thousand dollar goal, so I appreciated that. Um, but they're doing a comic book about the true life story of wrestling legend Bruno San Martino, and this isn't just a flash in the pan thing. I'm looking through the thing, and I actually selected about the uh, twenty eight dollar level here. He's done comics on Hacksaw Jim Duggan, the genius Lanny Poffo. Um, the Killer Bees, Nikolai Volkov, Bobby Fulton in the Fantastics. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff here. And like I said, it, it, I got like some of these are PDFs. Some of these will be print editions that we're going to have here uh, in the studio. Uh, but go check it out. Um, you know, I've talked on the show at length about uh, the, my fondness for, for Bruno San Martino um uh, from meeting him over the years and uh and uh, go check it out just go look for the um bruno san martino um the true life story of a wrestling legend it's a comic book it's uh, on there it's got 110 backers six days to go it's well over the pledge goal and they're uh, leading heading towards some uh, stretch goals right now so go check that out go and give a shout out for it thank you everybody in the chat room thank you producer missy what? I know your computer's down and you didn't really do much, but you're here and you're giving moral support. You're another warm body in the studio. Yes, I thank you when you're not doing something to make up for the times that you did something and I forgot to thank you. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you, chat room. See you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.